When does it start? I had, I, I questioned my patient, when does the disease, when do you ever feel that, it, that it, the disease starts? And the big, big, big majority is that it starts with puberty. And also when very young ladies come to my office with, accompanied by their patient, so they, they usually add, yeah, we could see it as with the age of 10, 11, that you had already some, hmm, yeah, some, some, some different, different um, difference in your legs. It, it looked different to your sister, for example. So it, in the great majority, it starts with puberty. It can start with pregnancy, but it's only a minority, and it can get even worse with menopause. But there are all other kinds of issues that might start, might trigger the onset of lipidema. A loss in, in, oh, in your family, a heavy, some, some really serious disease, some car accident. We have, we have people, they explain to us, they never had anything to do with lipidema. And after a car crash, they develop lipidema. So there must be it's raining? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so there must be something else, just, just a hormonal change. There might be also an emotional stress which can trigger this disease. So, and as I said, um, if you starve on and on, you have such a high emotional stress that you never will lose weight. But the other thing is that you can start and trigger the lipidema as well. Uh, we have found a, quite a fair, amount, a fair amount of reasons why lipidema causes obesity. First of all, uh, stay away from by BMI. It's useless in lipidema, ladies, and it's not reliable. I will show you some pictures which have a BMI of more than 50 and are rather slim persons. So stay away from this. If it's necessary, do a segment bioimpedance analysis, which helps you much more. If not, if your doctor insists on BMI and uh, ask about the waist to hip, re hip ratio, then you ask him to use the waist to height ratio, which gives him a clear impression if this people is normal. So you have a normal waist and you compare it to your height. So, and if you have a waist of 80 centimeters and you are 160 in height, so it's 1.5, which is absolutely normal, despite the fact that you have Botox like this. Doesn't matter. So just, just ask him to, to get rid of the bias. Just do the height to waist ratio. Yeah? So starvation and all, uh, starvation diet, and I told you, it's such an emotional stress. Even with 800 calories a day, you will gain weight. There's no change, no, no possibility to avoid this. Um, also, over all these years, I experienced that the people are really busy are really busy, they are exercising whatever they can. So they are focused on nutrition and exercises. Nutrition, exercises, diet, exercises. And so they, they, they keep them, the, the body really going and they, they, the effect is almost close to nothing. And so they get, all, after some years, they, get, they experience a the real frustration. On the other hand, if they get some joint issues, they have an, an, an injury, and they can't do this excessive sport anymore. They gain weight, of course. So this is one, another reason why they, um, they might be um, starting getting obese. Frustration, after all these years, if you diet and diet, sometimes people think it's useless anyway. So just let's take it in. And they gain weight, they explode then, of course. Well, they, their body is used to 800 calories. And if they eat 2,000 calories a day, which is absolutely normal, they use all this difference between the 800 calories to explode their weight. Frustration after countless modifications, all the people which are affected, I don't have to tell them. Um, you saw the presentation of Joanna Dudek yesterday? No, so... Um, she, she, this, she has written down a um, sentence which she found on a telephone interview from patient, what was the worst experience you ever had 
in words or in looking or, um, for example, um, I, I had a patient who had to accompany her son in the roller coaster. And uh, so the guy who is organizing this roller coaster had to squeeze the bar to secure the roller coaster. And he couldn't get it closed, so he squeezed it with all his might so to get it closed that the roller coaster could work. So things like this happen to these people, and it, it's such a humiliation, it's such a mortification. And uh, this is so much emotional stress. So, and now to, to come to this lymph, and uh, so we have lipedema, we get an excess of fluid, so the, this fluid has to be conveyed or transported by the lymph vessels. And this gives a reaction to the cluster uh, dif of differentiation 4, which again starts increasing inflammation. And you have this interleukin. Look it up. It's just, it's just on the internet. Um, it's a, a, um, an article about the mice mo mouse model. And then the expression increases the fatty tissue. So the fatty tissue again produces more fluid and the fluid needs more lymph capacity, and more lymph capacity again takes out more of these uh, hormones, which uh, expresses more, more inflammation. So this is an absolute vicious circle. As I said, it's not confirmed in human, but I think it is. Because people think, when I talk to them, it's just like it is. They get more fat, more fluid, more inflammation, more fluid, more fat. my role model, about lipidema. This is a, a lady, she has 220 kilograms. And everybody considers this lady, it's a just an obese lady. Um, she is one of my patients and um, I had a closer look at her and I examined her. Now it's well, what you know is that she, you can see, there's something odd about her appearance. She has a rather slim, upper body. You see this big enlargement of the hips. The arms don't match to the rest of the body. And of course she has some skin flaps there. Flaps there. But if you look very close at the skin of, of, of the bra, wouldn't you expect in an obese lady that the bra cuts in deeply? But it can't cut in because it's right at the, at the rib cage. There is no fat underlying there. So this lady has a rather small upper body, despite the fact that she is, is 220 kilograms heavy. So she is a, just a lipidema lady. And she is one of my worst cases. She was bedridden for three years. These arms were useless. They are just useless fat mass. She couldn't use her arms to brush her teeth. She couldn't eat anymore. She couldn't even comb her hair. And many of you people, uh, you realize when you try to dry your hair with a hair dryer that your arms get really tired and then you have to stop for a while and then restart. You can imagine what, what happens with arms like this. So they are useless. Um, and she was bedridden for three years, dependent 200% on her, on her patient. And my colleagues, repeatedly suggested by gastric bypasses. And she refused the idea because she has written, uh, she has read a lot about lipid and obesity. And so she said, guys, there must be something different. I do have incredible pain. Not even the strongest pain pills can help me. So is all these obese people, do they have the same amount of pain like me? And I said, no, they don't have. But then why there must be something different? So eventually, um, she came to my office. You can imagine how she came. She was brought by fire by a fire brigade. Eight officers carried her into the uh, examination room. And eventually, uh, the same group carried her to the operation room. And, uh, but luckily, uh, after three operations, she is walking again. And she is using her arms freely. Uh, as you can imagine, now coming to the cosmetic effect of liposuction, just, just taking something just right. You can imagine, this will not be beauty. 
but she can use her arms freely. She can lift her up, she can use it. So when we did the second operation, she asked, she asked me to do the, the, the arms first, that she could help herself. She could be, get more independent anymore. And, and she, she asked me, considering not being able to brush the teeth, she asked me, throw something at me. And she could catch it. <laughs> it was something which make, made her really happy. And she's, she's walking staircases again. She's, she's doing fine. Is there any picture of how her body looks now? I never saw her. I just stay in contact with her via email. Oh. So, but uh, all I got from, all news I got from her, that she is doing quite well and she is walking and she is even getting up staircases up and down again. Uh, to come back to the, to the initial features of lipidema, it's like a, like a rubber band. It's cut off the fat cuff here and the, and the ankle and it usually never affects the feet or the hand. And this stays for years and years. You can also see here, it's just like a rubber band. You see this distinct skin fold on this fat cuff. So if you have this, you show it to your doctor, say, look, this is lipidema. It's quite easy. So, um, stemma sign. It's internationally acknowledged stemma sign is if you can squeeze the toe the, and lift up a skin fold, it's a negative stemma sign. And usually lipidema patients do have a stemma negative Kaposhi. Uh, we in Europe, um, um, we are in Europe now, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, we have, the, the first describer was Kaposhi. It was 100, 120 years ago. And he was forgotten. But I got to uh, award him that he was the first describer. We call it Kaposhi stemma sign. Even in the international literature, it's just stemma sign. But Kaposhi was the first describer of it. When, when you have a sonography at hand, you can do um, examination and find quite interesting things. For example, if you have later stages, I'm not sure if you can see it from, from behind. It's these dark areas, these are like channels, and these are channels are filled with fluid. So there is a high incidence that th this lady or this lady might have already a lymph impairment. We can measure, for example, the diameter on several places, and then we can compare it with a normal um, person. So we consider that 10 millimeters in this area, just above the malleolus, about this size is normal. Everything more than 10 to 15 millimeters is highly suspicious that these people might have lipidema. And also we can squeeze the tissue to find out how indurated it is. I, I told you, inflammation leads over the years to uh, induration, to scar building, and uh, also uh, fibrosis. And if you can't squeeze the tissue, it gives you an idea that it has, the fibrosis has taken over the soft tissue. We talked about this, that after a while, untreated lipidema become lymphedema. So the time which is usually has passed is about 10, 15, 20 years. But then untreated people become severe swelling um, and it, it's, it's really it deteriorates quite a lot. And you see people like this. So here you can quite clearly see it's a lipidema. You have this rubber band fat cuff here around the ankles. But now the feet are affected too. You see these typical features on the toe with this rough skin fold, which is typical for lipidema, of a lymphedema. And when you do the stemma sign on this patient, it is positive. This lady has already a Kaposhi stemma sign positive. And you see, it's absolutely symmetrical. We have learned that lymphedema is usually not symmetrical, except it is caused by lipidema. 
because lipedema is a symmetrical fat disorder, so the impairment of the lymph vessels, the impairment of the lymph capacity is symmetrical. So you get this absolute symmetrical lymph edema caused by the lipedema. And so this lady will be stemma positive on both legs. Late stages, really late stages, you see it's this huge bulging on the foot. You have all this uh, indurations, you have this scar tissue, and you have this lymph folliculitis, which water, or better, lymph fluid, is pouring out of through the skin. You can see quite clearly, you have this bulging, you have this skin fold, which is typical for lymphedema, but you also have the sign that this was definitely, in previous days, just a lipedema. That's quite clear. But then, the capacity, the, the, the volume of the lymph fluid exceeds the capacity of the lymph system. And even this lady has a normal, absolute healthy lymph system, which has been shown with the lymph scintigraphy and lymph angiography prior to that. It does not work anymore. It exceeds the amount of fluids that can be transported by the lymph uh, vessels. So, and then it oozes through the skin, and you see this leakage through the skin. And this is how late stages are really look, and this is dreadful. It's dreadful, it, it's really hard to treat, and um, these people need really care. I don't know how it is in Sweden, but, but we would give, uh, we would take the patient to a hospital and get really uh, decongestive therapy, MLD, 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 plus bandaging. I had to explain this yesterday. So we, when we talk about MLD in the, at, at the initial stage, so we talk about MLD, manual lymph drainage, plus bandaging. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Um, you can't. Manual lymph drainage. Manual lymph drainage. Manual lymph drainage. Yeah. Uh, this has to be applied twice a day, getting bandages and make them walk. And after three weeks, they have, we have a decongestion, which is just the reducing of the fluid. Um, decongestion is, comes down to almost to the final end, so we start getting them, the, these people, in an ambulatory basis. And then uh, when we keep a certain level of circumference, we um, administer compression stockings. But these people, of course, need flat knitted compression stockings. And they need it, they have to wear it on a regular basis, means daily. After this impairment of lymph, of the lymph system, erysipelas are very, very common, and they are highly dangerous, and they have such an, an um, a risky, they take further risk for the lymph, for the lymph system. These are really, really late stages. This is one of my American patient. You can imagine she was sitting in a wheelchair, and um, yeah, this is all. This is lymph fluid, huge lymph fluid caused by caused by a lipedema, advanced lipedema. And of course, she is obese. She gained weight a lot, but this is already purely scar tissue. You can see how the the, the tissue is stuck to the bone. So this is scar tissue, heavy scar tissue. And uh, you can imagine if you do um, a treatment, an operative treatment on this, case, on this patient, so they, don't, they cannot expect some beauty cases. They just want to walk again. 